Well, I got this thing welded up. It's just kind of sitting on the back. It's actually about a quarter of an inch higher than what it's supposed to be, but it's good. Um, you can see it's just a little bit above the base right there. So we're gonna drop it down just a skosh. You know, I'll when I weld these on, I'll get it right. Now in the book, I ordered some bullet hinges and they were inch and a quarter in the barrel. And I figured the plates are either gonna be three eighths or half inch. So I figured a half inch. So I am, now it's a 16th shy, but I can knock it over a little. But I think two and a quarter is what I'm gonna need for that bullet hinge to set in here. And I don't even have the plates on yet. But I do have plenty of room over here. I can move this easily another three quarters of an inch. So I think she's gonna fit in fine. I'm gonna cut me some plates to go over the end, weld them on. They'll just be a quarter inch plate. And I'm not gonna put the plate on this end yet. I'm gonna wait till I get it hung and then I'll see where the pin needs to go. I'm going to try to make it so that the pin sets right up in this far corner. So, and if it does, then I can put a plate in around it and, uh, you know, weld it, make it watertight. <clears throat> um, the only place I haven't drilled yet is right here. And uh, I'm going to drill back here too. And uh, <clears throat> then they'll have airflow and it'll drain water down to the bottom here. So have to do some of that work and yeah now we're waiting on bullet hinges so i'm going to work on the lights i got to extend the wiring and i'll get them out here but i'm not going to actually uh put them on because i got to do some painting first as you know and uh, i might go on to the gas tank because i got to change that sending unit so anyway that's what's up and I gotta grease this um, cable. This thing is to dry, you don't even make your hands dirty. And I've got some, it's actually chainsaw um, grease. Yeah, that did is some shiny, dry, dry. So we'll lubricate that, see if we can get rid of our chair. Well, I've been working on everything today. I got this uh, new sending unit in, but I don't know if you can see that crap right there. That was all through the tank. This is a brand new tank. Don't know what it's from, but I sloshed and sloshed and then poured the gas through here and then I dump it back in through the strainer. After about a half hour, I had it all out so there was none left in there and uh, Put it together i don't know what that stuff's from but it looked like it might cause trouble so anyway on the back we've done pretty good here um <clears throat> so far so good a little disappointed in these uh bullet hinges you know shit made in china this one he has probably got oh i don't know very That's all right, I'm gonna have a ramp here anyway, so it'll kick it up on. And I gotta cut a inch hole in here, set this over the end, weld that on. That'll keep the wasps and stuff from building in here. This here will go on this one. So then I'll have a partial cover on this. It's not gonna cover it all for the simple reason that I'm gonna have a wedge drop in here. Just drop down in there. Kind of like the old wedges on the old uh, cable operated equipment, you know, just a long tapered wedge. I'll uh, have something, if it's covered halfway, it can't really go nowhere, it'll be captive, and I'll just drop it in so it sticks up two or three inches and something to grab a hold of. So that's what I'm gonna do there. Um, of course, I've got to put the tailgate back on to find center. I think it's pretty close to right there where I had it marked, but I'm not sure. Um, then I can put my piece of quarter-inch plate on. I can bore that for that mount that's up on the hood. 
and this old girl be ready for paint. The only snag that I had, and I bent this back out of the way, but I can't get my bolts in through. So I gotta cut these off. This one I don't think I'm gonna be able to save. I just gotta get rid of it and grind it up. This one here I think I can save because I'll put them down both the same amount. What I'll do is I'll put that one as close as I can get to that uh, hinge and still have the bolt go through where I can manipulate stuff. I didn't want it down that low because it's hard to get the gas cap off on this Jeep. But I can always open this up. So, no big deal. Anyway, that's what happens when they make a smooth um, gas cap. These gas caps are smooth in the kitty's ear. And they're awful hard to get a hold of. And that one's pretty tight. So, I need one of them like you had in the old big Chevys, you know, that had the little metal piece. That's what I need. But I don't know, you know, if I went and got one from a, for an Impala or something. I don't know. But anyway, probably could find one that would fit that, that did have the, the ears on it. So that's what I've got done today. Um, not a whole lot. A lot of dubbing and pondering more than anything. And uh, I also, of course, you know, you get sidetracked. And uh, I got one of my steps finished here. I got to put the other one over there. That's so that you can stand up and fuel this thing, you know? Because it's going to be just a little higher than it normally would be if it was a tractor. So, those are up about 10 inches off the, well, it'll be much 16 inches off the skid. So, anyway, what I'd do is I'd cut metal for this thing while the metal was cooling off. I'd go over there and dub around over there. Just keep busy, you know? Well, it's another day. <clears throat> I'm walking on metal there. That's why it's making so much noise, but I'm getting ready to do some cutting. But anyway, I milled this out yesterday. So that's going to be what holds this. I wanted a wedge so that it won't jingle around when you're on a dirt road. You know, I like to idle along quiet and see what I can see instead of having a noisy rat trap like most of them have, you know? I won't have no D-rings banging out here and stuff like that. I want to just stealth mode. So anyway, I got this figured. I'm going to leave it fairly long. I'm going to grind these round edges down just with a four inch grinder. And I'm going to take this piece here and see how it's laid out. This right here is going to get cut out for where that key goes. And then I'm going to weld a standard or an upright on right here. And I'm going to drill this up top where the top of the other one goes and going to put a linchpin in. That way, if you do hit a bump going down the road, this thing won't fly out and kill somebody, you know? Got to have stuff secure. So that's how I'm going to do it with a linchpin. Um, I got placed a box upstairs, I think, with a hundred of those. At one time when I was younger, a lot younger, I was a uh, Tisco dealer. And anyway, I got one box of those left, so I'll never run out in the rest of my life. But anyway, yeah, so we'll uh, get this done. I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to burn this out, weld it on top. And then I have to find myself a small piece of steel that I can drill a hole through, and I'll drill a matching hole. Might even make a slot here, so if this travels up and down a little bit, it'll still line up, and we'll be good to go on this thing. Then the only thing left to do is put the plate on for the tire, which is that piece down there under that C-clamp. Well, the wedge there that I've been drilling, um, this is hardened steel. Don't know what it is, but this is a smoked carbide, so the carbide isn't much good. But that's it, we're through. I tried drilling it with regular drills and you can't touch it. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that, how hard that was. I'll bring you back in a second. Well, that's what I came up with for the latch. Um, yeah, so, whew. yeah, that's hot. I didn't weld on it, but I welded beside of it. Heat transfer, but that'll work. And, uh, you know, it may jiggle a little. This will be about the only thing it'll jiggle. And, you know, but I think, I think it'll settle in. 
anyway. So I got the spare tire bracket off the front of the truck, off the Jeep there. Took it off the hood. So we're gonna not make it too much wider, no necessary weight, you know. Unnecessary weight, I should say. And uh, gotta put the two bolts on the top. That takes more load than the bottom. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be all right. Just put it on that quarter inch piece of plate. I say it's quarter, yeah, it's quarter. And did I mention it's raining? I mean, I don't know when we're gonna be able to cultivate out there. The water's sitting on top of the ground again. We're supposed to get, we've only got about a half inch of rain so far. We're supposed to get another inch and a half. So, to, two inches total. It's just, and people out in the mid part of the country, they're, they're dried right out. It's crazy. But I'd rather have a little too much and not enough. So I'm really not complaining. But yeah, be nice to have a week of sunshine. Anyway, I'll get this cut out. We'll get a centered on here. And, uh, well, I guess I'll drill the holes first before I get it centered. And then I'll uh, weld her on. Well, it's just tacked. But, tie is going to fit on there good. So, anyway, I like it. I'm going to take the tire back off and uh, put some beads down both sides. And I think that's going to about do it for this. Um, I think the bracket will be strong enough. It's meant to hold a tire this position. Um, you know, there's a little bit of... But, I don't think it'll bother. Um, anyway, we're going to call it a win. If it does crack this uh, thing around the bolts on the top, these things aren't too expensive to buy brand new, and I'll reinforce it on the next one. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're doing good here. Well, I got the cheek plates done. I come out to the corners. I still got to grind this up and dress it up with a grinder so nobody will get cut on it. And I got to cut that bottom, you know, grind that off, make it look good. Just got the hitch on. And basically, except for the grinding around the corners, this thing is 100% done. Gonna need paint, of course, but um, yeah, I have had the tire on it, it works good. Doesn't seem to affect it any as far as weight. So, yeah, I got to uh, get this thing ground up and painted. And then I got to put the fuel tank in. Once I do that, I can start bolting the body down. After that, I got to uh, put my, yeah, emergency brake. I guess it's just a bracket down underneath. That's never been put in. Uh, got it all sandblasted up. I think it's right here somewhere. Yeah, got to put that little honey in. And uh, goes up underneath. The body like so and there's a clip that holds the emergency brake cable in so that's never been hooked up they don't check emergency cables usually in this part of the country because if you step on step on them down usually they'll stick there because of the salt so they pretty much don't worry about that stuff up here in maine but um yeah so anyway we're gonna uh start going the other way i hope i'm gonna get a coat of paint on this tonight so yeah, well, that's one quick look before we go. It, uh, yeah, it's got streaks in it from the paintbrush, but I ain't too worried about it. When uh, somebody comes up behind you on the interstate and passes you, they'll never see them streaks. So, yeah, it's looking good. Now to the assembly. Anyway, my battery's running low again. Um, hope it was interesting. And, uh, yeah, worked out good. Those were uh, $34, or no, $29 bullet hinges, I guess, off Amazon. They're uh, poor to mediocre quality. They work. That's all I got to say for them. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, the only thing I'd do different if I made another one, I would use 3 16 tubing. A little bit lighter. But this won't break. I'd rather be overbuilt than underbuilt. So, anyway, take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.